All right, take two. Phone interruptions. Okay, I'm getting ready to do some uh, heads here. These are uh, screaming, screaming turd heads over here. Evo. I already did a uh, porting on them, so they're all smoothed up and made bigger. You can almost see in there. Oh well. So now I'm getting ready to do the valve work. So these are the valves that we were stuck in these. These are kibble light valves, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the seats. So this is what the seats look like before I cut on them. Blow that up a little bit. So we're going to start with the exhaust first. So continue. No shaking allowed. No shaking. You already put the finger on the lens, so you got a fingerprint on there. That's good. No shaking. Okay, this is called a what? Valve. Valve. Exhaust valve. Expensive valve. No, I didn't go to Harley or something else. <laughs> First thing I do is line up where you want it to hit. Then you take a short pilot. Holding fixture. Then you take the part that goes under you're going to cut with. You do this part. <laughs> Multiple angle. <laughs> and radiuses. Confuses everybody. <laughs> Let me see if it's set already. It appears it's not set. See how I missed it? Mm -hmm. That means I was doing something really dinky last time with this thing. So you have to eyeball where you want to hit. Be nice with slide. There it goes. Fun part is figuring out where it actually is going to hit. Trying to move it, it won't move through it. We'll leave it there. Can you use it as it is? Yeah, it might cut too big. We'll see. If it cuts too big, we make it smaller, right? Yeah. There you go. And the damn thing went slide on the thing, so screw it. I'm tired of screwing with it. We'll just see what happens. The worst that can happen is we can screw it up, right? You're on your drugs today, you're shaking like crazy. Okay, so we barely cleaned there and probably not quite all the way. So we'll probably come back and do this again, but we'll go ahead and mark it so we can see for sure. And you're just gonna do the other one? Nope. Are you still gonna stick with this one? Suck the crap out of that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna lap it. Back up. Who wants shaky video? You better than me. You fall asleep when you shake, so I said. That's what the last guy said. You're falling asleep while you're videoing. Yeah, I was. <laughs> See, this is the front head, so use the rear valve. Well, your head's are next, so you're gonna have to video at some point. Yeah, I'll video. I know. You're next, man. Jim, Jim, send somebody over to pick up his motor. Good. First, he calls up and says, "Well, I'll call Angel and have him pick it up." I said, "No, I ain't got his number. I, 
He goes, you got his number? I said, don't matter if I do or I don't. I ain't calling him. You, you call him. I ain't calling shit. Yeah. I looked up my motor. Oh, yeah? There you go. 2002 Panzer. What's your video at? Right on the thing. You watching it? Mm-hmm. Off close. So, see where the valve was on the edge of there? Mm-hmm. Now you'll see how much you got where you actually cut over here. So, it looks like it's right on the edge of where I just cut. It's a little thin there. So, you want to cut a little deeper, but... I have the right size now, so Aha. that's a good sign. Why are you are you going to jump in here and do the job? You're hoarding me here. <laughs> Why don't you stand back there? You can go way back. There's a zoom feature there if you need it, but remember, whatever you're looking at, it looks twice as close in the, oh, okay. on the screen. So yeah. Oh, then I was right up on it. See, yeah, <laughs> here I was right through my glasses. I think I'm looking through my eyeballs. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the problem. You gotta look through the screen. Yeah, the you gotta look through the eyeball, eyeball. You gotta look like that. Really yeah. So you look at the screen, then you look at the eyeball. <laughs> when you're hard, hurting space, you need water. I, th I think it has to get. Uh, you may want water. Sure. I think it has to get right to it. You know. I want to see this machine. Oh fuck, that's looking shit. That's so much better than than grinding with a stone. Yeah, but you know what that machine costs, you don't understand why. It's cheap. It's almost free. It's almost free. There you go. So now we're going to really screw it up. Okay, so now you can see the top angle right there. Mm -hmm. Above my thumb. Yep. How can you see through that? So you mark it right there. I said this marker doesn't work. See, that's why I use a good marker. Yeah, that's why you don't have See, I paid for American made shit. I think the last word was a key word. Yeah. That's why it doesn't work. Don't I'm thinking Sharpie is the next one we're going to use. Oh, yeah. There you go. Now you now can, I see, can it. see something. So much from using that for my milling machine. <laughs> okay, now we have the special cutter over here. You know it's special because it's got my name on it. Can't read it very good anymore, but it has a parabolic curve angle on it. You might have to look that up to see what that means. Yeah. That pin's in my way. If I stick it somewhere, we'll get ink in it. Maybe it'll start working again. Yeah, leave it upside down. Okay, so now you take this. This is loose the goose. Did you play with that? Well, that's not working. Need a little bit more length on this one. Well, I got some support now. If you don't have support for your tool, it doesn't work very well. That's the size? That's the size. So it goes right down to here, so. Yep. We have a little bit of interference right here. Somebody's constipated the chamber too much and won't run. <laughs> this thing has way too much compression anyway, I think. Oh, so you're going to fix it?
and just starts to hit that red mark. I run out of aluminum. <laughs> Some compression. There. See how it's got a nice flow curve in there now? Don't get so You missed it. You didn't put that on my bench, did you? No. Good. I know better than that. It's a little bit lower compression now than this side. Be able to run a lower octane fuel now. Dial that. Will the porting make up for the lower compression? Porting just makes it breed better. Wow. Unless you listen to the guy told me I don't want to do him. Yeah, well, we can't listen to him. What's he want? He doesn't even do valve work, so how can you port something if you don't do valve work? Well, yeah, he uses those cheap ass cutters you buy for 500 bucks. Yeah. Well, first of all, I couldn't afford a valve machine. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> it cost more than 500 bucks. Okay, now, the difference here is now, see when this valve opens up, if it opens up 20 thousands, there's no air restriction. You open up 50 thou, there's no air restriction. You open up a quarter inch, there's no restriction. But see, if you notice, once you get to about a quarter inch, you quit gaining flow volume. So when you go up to about 600 thousands, like my race bike, it starts constipating over here. So for a race application, you actually cut that whole wall out over here to make it breathe. Because when you got lifted around like this high, see how you're not getting, you're actually losing clearance as you come up? Mm -hmm. You're not gaining anything. So you always want to gain a little bit of flow as you open the valve up, or you don't have any improvement from your high lift. So, now over here, it, costs, it starts out really constipated flow because you can't flow up around the valve. And you see how it just funnels right into the valve real nice? That really picks up the airflow a ton. Of course, I don't have a flow bench, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But, <laughs> but my race bike says it goes faster when I do crap like this. Right. So now you see where the seat is now that we got the full width? You notice how the very shiny edge right up there on the edge? Mm -hmm. That is how much the valve is bigger than what I need it to be. Now when you put the seat way down over here, you might as well just put a stock size valve in there that's real small because you're not using what you put in the hole. Hmm. All you're doing is restricting the airflow because now it has to flow around that big ass barn door you got in front of the port. And now you look at your seat and your head and you make sure you got a nice seat all the way around the head. A nice gray line. And if you see the nice gray line, you're good. So now, as soon as that opens up, it's flowing air. There's no restrictions. So your low lift and mid-range flow pick up a ton. And then if you did the rest of your work right, the high lift flow picks up. So you gain mid, high, and low. I mean low, medium, and high lift everywhere, which is hard to do. You gotta do more than one thing to do that. Uh, You're going to teach that guy in the flow bench how to do it. Yeah, I don't need a flow bench to know that. I've had people flow my shit and wonder why it works better than everybody else's. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe because I don't have a flow bench, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Oh well. I'll get over it. I heard people mention those flow benches. See, he's under some impression that I have never used a flow bench. I never use it. I said I never own one. I don't use them now. Five types of machines, boy. And then you hear it cutting around all the way around. That means stop going down. So you see the seat in there, you highlight it with your ugly ass finger. See how it leaves marks where the lines are? And you take your felt tip and mark the top one. 
And then we have the same issue we had before. It's called constipation. It's just like when the cameraman has to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe I get in. That's why you're shaking so much. Think, isn't it? Yeah. Don't crowd him now. Yeah, oh. don't crowd me. I need elbow space. He just knock you with that elbow if you're crowding him. So see how the line disappeared right there? Yeah. Let me just stop cutting down. You opened it quite a bit on the sides. Yeah, that's called unrestriction. So you got a nice curve coming out though. Take it out to here, then you go back and back, you hand blend this in a little bit. If you want to lose some more compression. Yeah. What's lapping do? Just gets it to seat better? Shows you where you're at. Pretty much all it really that's what I use it for anyway. If there's any little high spots, when you cut or cuss, you leave like these little finger marks all the way around the circle, concentric circles. So each one of those little circles is a sealing lip, but they don't all necessarily hit. When you lap them, it smooths them up a little bit. You still got the lows in the middle, but it knocks them down and makes all of them work together. So you get like a little o-ring seal of each one of those lips that go around. And that's how it works. Eventually, a pound flat, and then it's just a straight surface all the way across. Now, even though you got that gray line right there, that's still not kind of a misnomer there because the lapping compound is a liquid and goes in the grooves. But it does work, seals up the area. So you can see on the valve how it goes around. So it's right on the outside edge, so on performance mode, you put it right on the edge. If you want to go 100,000 miles, you put it to the inside, that way when it wears, it doesn't make a big hole in the head. And you look to make sure you got a nice seat all the way around. And you do. So now you see the cutter has a nice flowed surface coming out, radius coming up. You have to look at it from this your angle of you goes over here. So you got a radius on the inside, then you got a valve seat, inner angle, the seat angle, the top angle. Then you have another radius, then you have my parabolic curve angle coming in from there all the way up. So you got all kinds of different angles and flows, so it flows up around nice and smooth. So, now I'm not sure, but I don't think a flow bench likes sharp edges. But once again, I don't have a flow bench, so I don't know anything. I just know it runs better. Okay, so that one's all done. Now we go to the intake side. Now if you notice the intake cutter, see it doesn't have all those different angles in there. It just has a flat angle in here that's been ground on it looks like. The seat and another top angle. A little different. You can see how it's all constipated up in here. We're going to take care of that problem too. I don't think it fits in the rebound. No, I don't think so. It does in that one though. Make sure you clean the junk out of the hole. So you put it in, pull it out, clean it a couple times. If you got any junk in the hole, it screws up with your center effect. Now these pilots go in straight about this far, then they start tapering from here all the way up to here. 
And then on the click way, on the click on sun, and I think there's a three file taper from top to bottom up there. Oh, yeah. So it's got a real spine taper to it. And my guess is there's something in making it not want to go in that hole. I don't know if it got burned up or what. It's definitely uneven as hell. Felt like it's fit in good though. These guys are pretty straight, see how they're it's almost center, not quite close. But we are a little off this direction. Precision adjusting tool. Yeah. Some people call them hammers. You can't hammer on your tools. No. You know, hammer mechanic is a bad thing, I guess, too. I use my hammer all the time. I like hammers. Hammers work good when you use them right. Okay, that one's a little off that way. This one over here. It's slightly different than the other one. Average out the air if it's not much. And right on the line. Let's squeeze it off. They're both off the same. If they're both off the same, that means the whole plate's off, right? All right. So when I tighten them down, they move them a bit on there. These things are pretty equal. These are not that good. All right, now this way here, we got a little bit of an angle issue we got to deal with. So that means they're not exactly correct in that plane. If you had a car head, they weren't exactly, you'd have to grind them anyhow. Well, you get the whole basic head in there at an angle. And you can jack the head up and down to get the angle to come in right. This head over here also tilts. It goes 15 or 20 degrees each way. For like a canter valve, more like a big block shed would be. So you can compensate. Uh, most of the time you just, uh, it's too much work doing every valve exactly correct, so you, right. just, you just get, we'll get them as close as you can as an average, and if one's way the hell off, yeah, it's a floating head, we don't care. Right. You do them all, it's just a car motor, it make no difference. So, it takes time to do shit right. But you can actually individually do every valve if you want to. But your height will change every time you cock something, loose something, the height will change a little bit. It's really critical that everyone has to be exactly the same all the way across. Because it might make some weird difference if you if you had one a little bit different than the other. Like the combustion chambers are all CNC cut anyway. Who cares? It doesn't matter if it's off a little bit. You look at how these heads cut over here; they're not even close to being the same. Yeah. Who cares? It is what it is. It makes no difference. As long as it's close, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're ready to do some cutting. So now we got to change our thing here. So take that out. Take a valve. And set the new valve. So we put the pointer out there on the edge where we want the seat. It's dark and the mirror's dirty and it's out of focus. Other than that, it's perfect when you use a mirror. That's all. Otherwise, you can see fine. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> a couple minor problems there. Okay, we're not using this one no more. We're using this one here no more. See, this is preset for your motor now. See, now I can do a whole bunch of these heads all already set, and boom, 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 boom. I can do a whole bunch at one time. The only problem is I usually only do one at a time. Okay, now we need to move on to the next pair. So you want this one or this one? Or this one? I don't know. It's 
I this, never used this, it is, this is for big valves. See how much bigger the holder is? Yeah. Thing? So you got two, two, and two. That's the reason why you do that. Now, one of these is probably an exhaust, one's an intake. See, that says 40. Damn, that is worn away. You can't even read it anymore. That's bad. Sometimes you grind the numbers on top. This is a 40, 40. So that's an intake. This one here is a 60, I can just read the 60. So that's 60 thou wide seat, so this is for an exhaust. This one here is 40 thou seat, so it's an intake. Okay. Now this is a VC10 profile. This one here is a, a 9. So that has to do with different shapes. So if you look at the two cutters, they're shaped different. Yeah. There's also an 8. See usually he's on the exhaust. Here's the 8. Oh, yeah, I like so that's it. another each one is a little different on the angles. Well you gotta buy a new cutter every time, huh? If you got a, if you need a new one, you can't grind so those. See how this one leaves a full radius on the inside yeah. of the seat. This one here does a radius and it goes into a straight. I, I open the valve bulbs up a lot, so I use this one because this here never in contact. But if you're gonna use a constipated stock small ass little seat then you put the rig big radius on the inside, use this cutter. I don't usually do jobs like that. But. That's if you're taking like a stock head and putting a bigger valve in it or something like that. And you want to keep the small part real small for high velocity for lower RPM torque motor like a like a new twin cam would be. Yeah. With a six feet overdrive. So you would use something more like that cutter. So you got choices of cutters to choose from, and then you can custom make whatever you want to, or have them custom made like I did. And then you get ones that look like these, custom made. And see it's got my name on it because it's custom made. Oh. So if you want to order one up, just tell Sonny you want that number and they'll send you one. Charge you a hundred and something bucks for it and mm. you'll be down the road. Yeah. Just a hundred and something bucks. You mean just for that part? Just for this little cutter right yeah, here. Yeah, you didn't think the holder was a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, holder's yeah. like lots of money. Jeez, those things were five hundred bucks twenty years ago. <laughs> Who knows what they are now? Jeez. You didn't think this tooling was cheap, did you? Oh, it's Cost money to have real tools. Anybody can buy some cheap ass drill, drill motor driven crap. Yeah. Bounces like I did on my girlfriend. So see how it, um, see how the cutter down there is. Almost the same size which you already had in there. Oh, right yeah. Now. So that tells you you're pretty close. What are you looking at? I don't know. Uh, there we go. Got it wrong. You have to go up higher where you can see better. I'm so, not tall enough. Well, you could go over this side over here and you look better. Yeah, I can see a lot better over here. Uh, right down there. You can even zoom in a little bit better more if you want. There you go. That's too much. Yeah, somewhere in between. Right there. So you can see how it goes down like that. Oh yeah. Better if the light was on too. Oh, it was the light on. was on. Yeah. Just couldn't see anything. Anyway, it's a hard like place that. to see. Yeah, I'll unblow it up and get it back. Take the blow up. Uh, give her the blow up. Go to the other button. The other direction. There you go. There you go. I won't get complaints, but they can't see because it's all blown up. We'll get complaints. I'll stand back a little bit. Oh, with me. I, get, I have to have breathing room here. Just knock me. Just give you a shoulder block? Yeah, I can take it. You can take it? Yeah, but I don't know if the camera can take it. You know, yeah, the camera probably can't take it. <laughs> You'll get a lot of lot of com comments on the video. <laughs> <It's so cockpit. laughs> yeah. I wish it was taller. It's cutting pretty high up on the thing. I think this slides as thick as not. Oh yeah. yeah. It's cutting way smaller than what your valve is. So, double check that size. Might have missed it. This is a lot more precise. 
It'd be nice to actually see what you're trying to see too. This one's real close on the upper angle, it's only five degrees different, so it's hard to see the transitional change. If anything, I'm a little bit too big. Hmm. If in doubt, check. No, that don't. What's up with that? Hmm. Twist the valve. There's something wrong with that guide. These are supposed to be fitted already. I don't think so. Can't even do the valve job with this right Hitting the top. Can't even tell. I can't even leave enough of a mark to tell. Something wrong with that guy. It's got a mark, but I can't see exactly where it is. But it looks like we're too small. Yeah, pretty cool. It's on the edge, too. Yeah, we're, right, we're only hitting right here. Right yeah. Very, very inside edge. Yeah, you can see it. Something else is going on. Is that the valve we just did? It gets fitted. You know what happened to the valve guy? It's all right now. What the hell? What was that? I don't know. Maybe a little bird caught in there. It's not sticking anymore, if you notice. Yeah, I noticed that. It's got the clearance. He's moving back and forth. And then the valve guy? That'd have been. Somebody what else could have been? It? Somebody came all over it? I don't know. <laughs> it didn't feel right. All right, it's still pretty sticky. How'd that transmission turn out? How'd your bike, race bike? Ready to go? No. Did you get to work on it? No. Yeah, I worked on it a little bit. One of my nitro solenoids broke, so I have to get a new one ordered up already. Be in a couple days. I didn't videotape me work on it. All that dyno tuning, a lot of wear and tear on my bike, so. Did it? Yeah. What do you make, like eight runs on that thing? Yeah, we made a lot. See, that's like a whole season of racing almost. All right. That's the drawback of dyno and drinking. Yeah. You know, it scuffed the piston and it wore out other shit, so. So I got to, I ordered up another Nova for it. I'll be here in a couple of days. Get to coming. Okay, so obviously I'm blind as a bat on this one, so we're going to cheat, go a little bigger. Slide it out a little bit. Try it again, see what happens here. We'll mark that so I can see. Tell me at the pedal I try to recenter.
I didn't keep the chatter marks out of it. That is a problem. Well, that looks good. No, I'm not even picking up the center yet. Still. Oh, there's your red, yeah. I guess I can just weigh the hell off on my cutter size for some reason. Obviously, I'm looking at the wrong angle on the thing or something. I want to sneak up on it, figure out where it's at. Well, that works now. It sounds right. Tony, it's not loud to work a shit, though. She's digging in, see the way the hell I Yeah. Go. See, it's more like a production job with a don't give a squat. Yeah, it's on the valve. <laughs> well, look at my heads. They were way off, man. They weren't even close. I'm way off right now, too. So whatever I'm looking at on my cutter over here, I'm not even close. I'm going to make a little change here. Did you see a little change this here? Yeah. A big change. So we just move it out until we get close to what we need. Let's put this in the hole. It's sure a hot one today. Yeah, I haven't had one this far off in a long time. Either. Some of the claims are repeat within a half a thou and everything. Bullshit. Seat this time. So slick the way it just flies across there. You notice how it repeated a lot better the second time I re it? Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Maybe the pilot's bent slightly, or we have some other issue where we got a burr under it. Okay, so now we got a full seat cut. The extra seat angles right there in the middle. See right there is the original. That's where the seat is. It's right there. I'm gonna mark it up on top too, so I know where it is. Okay, now I'm gonna actually lap this thing in. Is that your target mark, that red? What's that? What is a red there? Is that the target? It shows the where where it's, it's touching it. It highlights me for the second second pass, second cut, whatever, the top cut. You know the valve rotates, and then it's close to where we want to be at mm -hmm. the valve. It says it's too, too far in, so it's way on the inside. So I've missed it by a ton and a half. See, I'm still off by a lot. Are you running for the edge, or? Yeah, I should be on the edge. Oh, I always thought they were supposed to be in the middle of them. Is it going to go fast or not? Oh. So I gotta figure out what the hell I'm doing wrong over here. That's if in doubt. Start over. And obviously what I'm doing the first time I did not even come close. Slight adjustment there, but pretty close. That wasn't the problem. I'm looking at the wrong thing. 
must be looking at the top of the top coat instead of the angle cut on it. Anyway. Mirror's so out of focus and dirty, it's not helping. You see something now. That nice. helps. Well, I don't know if that helps me. It's still really hard to see where they're at. Should be close. Let's see here. Did that tranny put together? Nope. You come down. I'm cutting a lot bigger. I'm going to go ahead and cut this side so I keep cutting the same one. Is that that little line there? Or? That's where it hasn't cleaned yet. It's close, but it hasn't quite cleaned up. Yeah. I'm not going to see if it cleaned up anywhere yet. I'm going to get to where I can make a quick lap, but I don't even see a mark where it hit at yet. <coughs> Hey, you got one of those big cameras. You can see, I cut on both. I got the seat here, I haven't even hit yet, but I'm cutting the hill on the top and the bottom. Yeah, I've seen that. It's equal, so it looks like the diamond's probably pretty close. But I'm changing the whole profile of the whole seat. And you can see that by what the cutter's doing. And that makes more difference than any port job ever will. There you go. So now that edge is gone. So yep. it's clean metal all the way around. out there on the outside edge this time. If not, it'll be somewhere else. It's out there, ain't it? Yeah, it's just a street job. It's a straight job. Race job, you'd be a little bit further out. See how it's fairly even all the way around. That's what you want to see. So I don't know if you can see it from the side view, but see there's a different angle on top because this is top cut. Yeah. So the angle changes about right where my thumb is to a different angle. So that gives you a transitional area from the. You come in through here, you go across this area, then it starts to make a turn, 
Then it makes another turn, goes across the face of the seat, then it goes off the edge of the valve. Then when it goes off the edge of the valve, that's when my angle I put into here catches that on the other side of the, of the airflow and, and turns it around, makes, it. makes a nice curve and makes it flow out into a nice funnel shape, and that's where your power comes from. And that's more well, important. Comes from the flow bench. That's more important than any port job is because that's the last thing that you control is what goes into the chamber. And that's what the porting guys won't tell you. The valve yeah, seat yeah. makes more important than anything they're doing. So the next thing would be making 15 different S-bins in there. As long as it cleans up and it goes in the chamber, it'll just get a run. <laughs> and it has to seal too. If it doesn't seal, you got no power. Yeah, definitely. So you got two things you got to do: seal and straighten the airflow out, make it, make it flow correctly. So it doesn't matter what's underneath it. It's not, not, not nearly as much importance. Okay, now we need to do the top cut. How did Mr. Green's head turn out? That was a lot of welding, wasn't it? And if you watch the videos, you'll know. Yeah, well, I don't watch videos. He hadn't come back and complained that it didn't work yet. Oh, he picked it up? Yeah, it was yesterday. You must have worked your ass off on that thing. Uh, a little bit. Okay, now this, How bad here, we gotta, this here we got to set the dimension. We haven't done that yet. You got to do that for each cup? Each valve size. This is my top cut. See, I didn't work on strings, but I was working on other stuff called heads. If you notice, the workbench isn't full of heads anymore. Yeah, I noticed that. Except for yours. Well, what can I say? Clunk. I'm just glad that motor went away today. Okay, so now just like we did on the exhaust, we're going to do on the intake. So you do a quick look down there, you can see the cutter looks like it's in the right spot. See? Yeah, it does. See, it doesn't cut much on this side. It cuts right there, though. But look what it does on this side. Holy moly. Wait a minute, let me get it. Now that's not even close to being equal flow out of your valve. So how do you make a nice even flow around your valve head when you got the one side being completely masked by a wall? Right. That doesn't work. So you lose the compression, straighten out the airflow, you pick up more power everywhere, and you don't have any stupid detonation. Jeez, a bunch of pluses in there somewhere. to show up. I think we're right there. Could go a little bit deeper, but 
didn't quite hit the seat yet, but I'm right on top of it. The biggest thing there's a no lip right now in there, so right. I'm in the cutter lip. But we'll go just a tick deeper. Not much. No. Five ten thousand all we're talking here. Sorry about the jumping of the video. Steal it. Right, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. I'm not seeing what I'm looking for yet, so I don't think I'm deep enough, but it's definitely deep in there. So you little see a little difference in what you got between that side and this side? See the difference here and here. Mm -hmm. and here and here? No, you're filming no, over here. No, sorry, sorry. There's a difference between here, here, and over here, here. You're not looking what you're doing. First thing you gotta do, you gotta get the hell out of here. Why are you blowing up so big? I told you, make it, get away from being blown up, you can see a hell of a lot more. Okay, now you can actually see something. Okay, get a little bit of blow up. See, not a lot. Now this is gonna look twice as big on the screen. Okay, so you can see how tight it is here and how tight it is over here. And you go over here on this one, you can see how it's all flowed out here. It's hard to see the radiuses. But if you get over here, you can see how you come up around and then it flows around. It's got a nice parabolic curve where it pops out. So that's what you're after. Now we kill the zooming feature again because we're going to over zoom it again. All of that video you were video probably over zoomed again. Hey man, good time. That's filmed. Okay, yeah. now you got your valve over here. So look at the clearance. So now when as soon as that thing opens up, you're flowing a ton of air right now. And the more you open that thing you keep flowing more and more air. It's unrestricted air and it, it funnels it right into your cylinder. Remember the cylinder's right here, the wall left cylinder. So it's making the air go right into your cylinder where it needs to be. And all the way up to about here, you're gaining flow. Now, when you, when you keep lifting it, you don't gain anymore now. So anything past this much lift, you're starting to lose flow. Or you're not gaining flow. It's the same as losing. If you're not gaining, you're losing. So, what you have to do now, you have to go back and cut this wall away here and pull this back to gain more flow as you open the valve up. So when you get up these real high lifts, like maybe that much, that's probably about 800 thou there. Yeah, that's a big lift cam. Yeah, well, I mean, like on race bikes. So you'd have to be way up here. You'd have to cut this thing out further to keep gaining airflow, otherwise you lose the flow. The disadvantage is to open this up, you lose compression. Well, you can gain compression other ways. But there is a limit to how much you can get, though. So that's the difference. But the biggest thing is you're going to gain a lot more mid low, low and mid-range power from having to cut out like that than you're ever going to get from being constipated like this. So that's the difference. But you can see the hell the combustion chamber is completely a different shape now. Oh yeah. You know, we took out a lot of compression. That's over a point, I'm sure. And, see to one now. And I don't really care. <laughs> Probably have too much in it anyway. Now. Okay, now we're going to equalize the seat diameters to both heads of the same. Once again, it doesn't repeat for some reason. So we'll just recenter up the stem a little bit. Spin it again, maybe the burr. Or in this case, there might be a little bit of slime on the one side of the paper. You want to have a nice even cut when you first hear it. You're getting a chunk 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 noise, it's not sounding correctly. See, that was even worse than before. So these machines do not repeat. 
you have to figure out how to make them repeat. When the sun comes over and shows you how to do it and they can't get anywhere near as good as you are, you know there's a problem. That's when the salesman gets frustrated and leaves. <laughs> yeah, I bet. How much weight that was? Smell it? Yeah, you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Now yeah, let's see if I can get a good shot of this. You're not blowing up, are you? No. Yeah, you come a little closer. You stand over here a little bit. You can blow it up half of that. Okay, it comes out too much. You already blew it up. Okay, stand up over here. Feel if you can see better. Ready? Ready. Where it's sitting at? Come on in. Pull back just a little bit. Left side. because all that load on it might have made it move. Quite a bit. Yeah, I'm not deep enough, I don't think, but I want to stop and make sure. There, I'm seeing that line I wanted to see. See that little shiny line right there? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to see. I didn't notice it on this one over here, but it must be over there. So we're just doing just a tick more. See, there's a flat spot ground on the end of this right here. Right. And that's what that little shiny line is you're starting to see is. Gives you a reference point for where you're at. You had these ground specifically for this? Yeah, well I hand ground that in there and I had to duplicate it because I didn't I liked having that reference angle in there. Yeah, that's you know when you come on top of the seat. Well use the parabolic curve out just a tick so you can tell where you're at. See how it's getting a little bit wider? So that's what I'm trying to see. Yeah. I can see the shininess too. Now, this isn't just a flat angle. See, it's still at a pretty good angle. You have to look over here where I'm looking at. We're looking at the head. See, this is not, it's not like it's flat. It's still at an angle. Mm -hmm. It's like a 30 degree top angle or something like that. So it's not like you're going to make a big abrupt edge when you got it. So when you run your finger across, you can really feel how smooth it just flows right around everything. I know you can't feel fucking thing. It doesn't feel right when you do that. <laughs> but you can just you can put your finger in the whole port and just feel how it goes around. I don't give a shit what this flow bench says. That works. If it feels good, it probably flows good. Okay, so that one's now cut. We've probably lowered the compression a little bit on that one again.
If you don't know all the references are all about, you have to go read the comments. Somebody's picking on me. Okay, this is the rear one. Well, that's what I'm here for, they can pick on me and leave you alone. Ah, I don't care. I'm a big boy, I can take it. I'm not, I shrink every year. Oh well. <laughs> Can't fix personal problems. <laughs> well, you notice I don't have a ton of laughing compound on there. So there's our mark. Yeah, now you're out there. A little conservative still, but closer. You can kind of see the inside top cut right there. See, it's not quite, it's close to the inside and the outside edge. Yeah. On my, on my relieving. So that tells you where I wanted to be originally. It's a little bit higher up. <coughs> that I can do. Nice, good, even. Does a nice, mark. does a nice cut too. It's see, nice. See, nice, see the nice green, really nice gray mark in there. That was your lap. You want to make sure it's consistent all the way around. And that tells you you're, you're on center where you should be. They don't always do that on the big valve. The bigger the valve, the harder it is to make it do that. Right. In this case, it worked pretty good. Go. Take these down here a bit. Okay, so there you get a better reference to what it looks like. So you get a top view, you can see it. So you can see how things always float in there real heavily. So we'll go back with the button the grinder. We're gonna we're gonna radius off these transitions a little bit here, so they're not so sharp. Give a little better flow. Same up here on this top angle. You can kind of hear my finger catches up. So I'll flow that back a little bit, which will help on the higher lift flow. So it's nice and smooth and got a real sharp edge out here. Nice hand. Well, that's your hand, not mine. Supposed to be looking at this. So there's a big lip right there. There's actually not, that's not a lip, it's just a straight edge, but it acts like a lip for the flow. So we're going to grind that top edge away, lower the compression some more, and pick up some more flow. That little edge you were just feeling <coughs> uh, will restrict the flow? Sure. <coughs> Look like much, the air is trying to expand and it's got a wall on its way. They won't let it go. You got to move the wall back a little bit. See where the wall there? So when the air is opening up, it wants to keep opening up. So you go inside of a hot motor, it's, the air is moving around a lot. The air expands and contracts, it doesn't stay in one shape. Okay, look out. So stuff you got to take into correlation and consideration when you're doing a motor. Everything matters, you know, just that stupid flow bench motor. Maybe that's why those numbers aren't real world all the time. Oh well. Alright, this is done for now. I'll have to do some grinding next, so we'll be back.